as he pleases. And with two CTs right there, oh, that headshot into Magus could have absolutely been a disaster. Instead, Nexa taps that bomb once, goes for the duel and loses. Astralis will win pistol. Oh, he had a chance. For sure, he had a chance. That one kill, Glaive low, player on cat was low. That was that was close. Missed a couple of shots. Now, we'll say G2's form coming into this year looks pretty good. Uh, versus Furia, it's hard to gauge exactly how good they were um, at this event. Uh, they definitely, like, on a few maps, looked very on form. Case Rado looked peak performance. Yuri looked peak performance. Art even had really great matches. And uh, when they faced off against G2, it felt like, yeah, that game was close. But I think a lot of credit to Furia. They actually played quite well. And we look to some of G2's pieces. Nico's there, of course. Kenny S actually not bad. Nexa was definitely all right. It was mostly Hunter Almanac falling a little bit behind. But overall, the main core, I guess, um, was, was firing off. I think the beauty of having Nexa on your team is, like, he can be actually counted on to have huge individual plays, even over Hunter sometimes, who, you know, top 10, 15 rifler in the world. But um, I think the forum looks very, very strong for G2. And as was cited by Device in an interview, he said this is G2 is the most stacked lineup in terms of talent in, um, in Europe right now. He said it off the cuff, so I don't know how much stock he puts into it, but it makes sense. You know, now with the acquisition of Nico, of course, that's what tips the scales. Yeah, that's what we expect to kind of take him to a whole new level. One of the highest skill ceilings, perhaps. So, and they had the desk interview with Hunter. Mm -hmm. And um, they said, like, what do you think about this match versus Astral? He said it's always close. And it, it usually is it's usually a close 2-0 for Astralis, mm -hmm. but usually a close 2-0. Any of those maps usually result in a third. And the interesting thing about this is because is that we've got Vertigo coming up second, which has not appeared since the Road to Rio event Europe uh, back in spring, I believe. Device going to kick off this round. Collateral shot from the scout. Not too bad. Obviously, G2 just sitting outside of long this entire time. Nico was back in T-spawn, hoping somebody would get aggressive in mid, but Astralis don't make that mistake. They don't make the risk. No need. Here's Device's first shot. The re-peak, and let's enjoy the collateral. Nice and early. We get a little bit of uh, fireworks here towards long, but this is what we want. The buyback from G2, four AKs, one Galil, all the nades in the world. Let's see it. Astralis, Astralis, G2, Vitality, probably all best Dust 2 teams right now. If there are going to be Dust 2 teams, yes, it's a meme. Sometimes G2 lose their Dust pick a lot, but they've put a ton of practice in. They have some very notable victories and big events with it. Um, they're a good opponent for Astralis. I think Astralis right now are probably the best. And like on CT side, they have some nade protocols that are absolutely extraordinary. I'm looking for a round again where... There was a situation where Zipix pushed off Cat in one round versus Vitality at the end of last year, and Zipix died without getting a kill. And then right after that, a few seconds in, we had all these different nade protocols come out from Astralis that punished everybody else who pushed in the default when they couldn't see anybody. The spams and nades, and that's when it made me realize, like, man, they've got so much more going on Dust 2 than meets the eye. It'll be cool to see if anything like that happens again. And also with having time off between these events, right? We're looking for new stuff too. More of yeah, those, sure. more of those protocols. If they can exist on Dust2, like let's let's see it. Where where can we go? Yeah, I feel like if you know if the new stuff on Dust2 is is an excavation site, this hole's already pretty deep. No massive fossils. Amanek is gonna drop that Molotov to the back of the site. Dupree tucked in on Humvee. Amanek kind of getting lost in the smoke here, but he is still on top of the boxes, so jumps up, gets himself one kill. Magus trades, but there's that split. Comes through mid. Glaive was unable to contain it, and it works out perfectly. Yeah. G2 on the board in their first rifle round. Yeah, they actually stuff that specific push through mid B. That's used to support the, the B players. They are a bit slow to do any kind of rotation, so they're just not in time to even put some spams down through the smoke, and it comes down to the two players in the site. The issue for Astralis here, depending on what G2 are feeling like, is that they gave up these augs. So I, I think um, one thing Sponge pointed out is that they're going triple aug setups on basically every single map. And towards the end of the, the nasty, nasty Krieg meta, Astralis were not buying Kriegs because... They didn't want to give them up to the CTs because then it just helps the CTs 
uh, it helps the CT snowball on their side if you if you do give them up. So they decided just to not buy them or buy one or buy them at the end of the half. Mm -hmm. That way, even if you lose, you're fine. So it's interesting to see that they're buying a weapon that is kind of regarded as that much stronger at the moment. Maybe not really recognizing its strengths on the T side as much. Bit of a shortcoming for the AUGs though, man, that rate of fire. I feel like there's some positions where if you're looking for those multi-kill spray downs, the M4 still has the edge. It's just an awkward rate of fire on the AUG. You think so? Is I, it I think one so. bullet faster, right, the kills? Uh, yeah, yeah, the damage is, the damage is decent. And so is Nico. Apparently, as we see Astralis get aggressive to the top of middle, Nico cracks some heads wide open. Five versus three at the minute 35 mark. Nice and early here for G2 to try and tie up with this T side. We get the hinge smoke through mid doors. There are a couple of players on the opposite end of this. I feel like this cat push could maybe net them something, but if it doesn't happen, those other two CTs have to just transition into the save. And unfortunately for Zipix, it's just that MP9. Yeah, it's the early warning sign. It's kind of Zipix gets in the spot and it's like, well, if they come here, I'm close up with my uh, my MP9, I get a kill. If they kill me, I die early, can cause a rotate, or, you know, I live long enough that things just get really hairy and we've got a couple of CTs hanging around at mid to maybe try to help me out a little bit. But for the meantime, you know, he's got a lot of information and a lot of information early. So we'll see where they go. Hunter's about to jump up. Tag team, the other Kovach coming up cat as well. But it's a very awkward duel and Zipix can't get anything. Yeah, really efficient machine so far here from G2. Kind of pumping the brakes a little bit before they re-engaged into this fourth round. But those CTs who were at B did get the chance to rotate over. Now the bomb's on catwalk and it's coming in with this long split. So the moment they feel resistance on both sides, they are out of there. They know the B site's open. Maybe this player gets taken down by device. Sure enough, Nexo will be a casualty. But how much more can Astralis look to get away with as G2 take their second? Well, they've got a gun waiting for them over at long. Uh, they can go and grab if they'd like. And with the bomb down, it looks like the CTs will potentially get hunted. But Majesk, low HP, still has a headshot angle to work with. There's a player coming up from the spawn. And Hunter will take some damage, but he won't get the kill. So, what will this mean for a device? Taking uh, two more down would be huge, but it looks like they're not going to give him the chance. And we are all tied up. Nice and early. Things, things stay interesting. What do you chalk this up as? I mean, Pimp was the only guy to officially predict G2 for the matchup, but if you had to, if you had to give this uh, you know, a 50-50, a 60-40, what you think they're wrong? So I was thinking about, like, you know, in terms of the way I rate teams right now, Strauss Vitality or S-tier teams in the A-plus category for me, are teams like G2. G2 would probably be my the first, um, the first team I put up there, and uh, uh, besides them, and I say that they have a chance, even though they usually lose to teams like Astralis or Vitality, they have a chance. I'd say they're the next teams up. Mm -hmm. I think the maps that they play overlap well with Astralis. The vetoes are predictable but comfortable for both teams. And so, yeah, I mean, I still think it's like a 40% pick based on the head-to-head, -head, but a reasonable one. If there was a team that could beat them coming into the new year especially, I think they could surprise. And here's another great pick from the barrels for Nico at top mid, stopping the mid aggression early on. Yeah, unfortunate moment there for Glaive. He's up at the top of middle. The Xbox smoke blocks off what was like three sets of eyes in mid to try and help him. You could see him extending to the top of middle, not getting contact, deciding to come back, wary of the potential for that lower tunnel push. And then sure enough, just as he turns away, that's when the mid pick comes through. So G2 hitting the timing on the proverbial head. Zipix over towards the CT cross, eats a bunch of flashbangs. Aminex still here towards middle, confirming this heavy stack up from Astralis in mid. So if nothing happens from Zipix, again, we're going to see Astralis concede. Mm. Three rounds in a row for G2 and maximizing these moments because they are very much sitting in the driver's seat off of this economy. Lots of cash behind them. Very few casualties. One last round, none so far here in the fifth. You don't usually see Astralis, you know, give up the 5v4 that often, like this early two rounds in a row, especially taking the big risk of doing the same push again. You know, that takes a lot of uh, confidence to try to do. And you realize you've got a lot of egg on your face if you die in that push, so... They go for that risk, and that has me curious what they're going to try next round. But, of course, it is a mixed buy, so I'm not surprised they, they surprised that they tried something a little bit more risky. So, yeah, I'd, I'd put, like, so I'd say Astralis Vitality. 
two best teams in the world and everybody else in terms of their play as a team, as a system, is just catching up. Like, they're, they're by far the best. And then Navi, G2, probably the next two up, that can trade blows with them, that aren't afraid of them, even though they're not as good, and can sometimes upset in tournaments and have a new year to kind of prove what they've taken out of the break, to prove that they are as good as, like, kind of the sum of their parts now that they have, like, so much talent on the rosters. A little bit of a disappointing storyline, a little bit with Na'Vi, what we've seen recently, but still time in this tournament as well. But we're already out to it in this round. Kenny S goes down to Magisk, and we've got long control as kind of a response. This is interesting, because it actually benefits G2 a little bit that he's shown himself at long, even if they're not going to use it here. Uh, the rotation is back for the CTs. We've got Zipix pushed up on Cat, but this might be an expected position at this moment. The only issue is the one unanswered refrag. Uh, the one unanswered kill, excuse me, the opening kill of the round on Kenny S. Hunter's going to have a little bit of presence here by Glaive. Oh, he turns his back. Timing working out for him, but Ooh. Glaive hits the Deagle up close. And now things start to get precarious for G2. Moses level reactions there. De oh, device though, caught out by Amanek. So that op answers back, picked up off of the corpse of Kenny. Magisk's scout tries to move over. Dupree has retrieved the AK, and Magisk with a kill through the smoke as he's being boosted. Although there is still that chance for the T to cross over. Man advantage held onto for Astralis. Glaive sitting inside of the smoke. And Amanek, well, he's trying to find something. And the CTs have fallen silent. Don't be fooled. G2, they know they're close. But where exactly? Oh, Nexa. He crouches behind the wicker baskets, pops up, and stops Magisk from getting anything other than those first two kills. Nexa plants bomb. Suddenly, G2, who looked very much pressed on that ramp, are in a post plant. Amaneki just has to hit this shot, and he doesn't because Glaive gets another D kill. Nexa standing in the open, trying to keep it alive. Seven health for Nexa, and it's just not enough. The Deagle from Glaive with three kills gives Astralis their third nasty and that is the first kill that comes down on the lower stairs versus hunter i made a joke i'm sorry moses i didn't mean it 517 millisecond reactive time it was probably a moment where hunter looked at the mini map and that's why he died on the stairs but this is where uh glaive comes into play oh my god he barely saw that that, was that too ridiculous what is that magis every kill was nuts and glaive with such low hp through all of this is able to go three for three on shots with the Deagle. Killed the majority of the G2 players and upend their economy. Astralis didn't have that much to work with, even though they were kind of winning throughout that round. Yeah, just a matter of being able to keep four players alive in the previous round. Not losing all the tools they had walked in with the, on the force. But G2 pretty quick to just cut through Catwalk, get up here and challenge with their smokes. We can see Astralis shuffling around ever so slightly. Two players committed inside of the B site. Looks like Long will be the target for G2 in the mid-round moment. So far, with Astralis wounded, they're a bit scared to go for some of these pushes, some of their catwalk aggression. Um, G2 have them playing very defaulty. I really like how they're approaching this. I think they got the right tempo right now. They've got cat control. They've got a good split coming out. And Zipix isn't in the pit, but Device gets a kill out towards the mid-B setup. Yeah, so these long frags suddenly become all the more important. And even with the shadow extending, Nexa, quick headshot. Oh, the op misses from Kenny. That could have really weakened up this A site and allowed for the T's to properly split in from Cat. They've got two players close. This Cat beat could be big, but instead it is a Astralis to fill that kill feed and take away a one-round lead. Ah, that wasn't very good, man. They had a, first of all, I guess they couldn't figure out where Astralis were standing, but Hunter up on Cat, like he had a position where they could have crunched the players on CT who were highly uncomfortable. The player who was behind single who jumped out into the front of Cat, he should have been peaked by Hunter. They should have refragged with Nexa peaking long much faster. The, the CT positions here are not good. And basically, G2 did not punish. Everything looks solid, and they threw one risk with the mid to be fake. But even still, with the four hitting A, they got virtually no kills. Did they get any? Nope. I don't think they did. E doesn't wow, I can't believe he actually can't see that, but he'll see his friend. Anyways, that's Nico down. That's a high value target. But you know what? Hunter, I think knowing that he's gone unnoticed, he's really kind of speeding this up. Bomb's right behind him. Got Glaive on site, but that Molly looks like it's going to get thrown into CT spawn. 
So his position might be pretty powerful. No long split to complement this. We're gonna start dumping out the utility here. Shapes Hunter off of the fight. Zipix lending a helping hand, but with a Molly back on site, that's Glaive burned into the open. Zipix using the AUG from Cross with another kill to his name. Amonet goes to check back, but just as he walks away, that's when we get this flank activated by device. That AWP coming in from Catwalk being checked as Amonek hits the head, and Kenny puts that bomb down. We've got a CT up close. In fact, they're both right there, and Kenny S is going to hit his first shot, diving Ooh. back into the site, dodging oh, damage, oh. and taking down Dupree right back to the tied game. This is back and forth. That was nasty. Like the perfect movement, right? Hops right over the ledge, doesn't have his ass sticking out, sitting on the top of it, gets into the site, comes back for the quick scope. Really sick stuff. Proactive play here from Kenny. Nice shots from um, Omenek. I was re really surprised uh, to see, of course, you know, device coming in, right side peak. It feels like he's definitely, you know, if it's not an instant first bullet headshot, going to be able to get the kill with his op and then get to continue the round forward. But Omenek holds his ground. Next uh, out long, but he got tagged by the smoke. Woo! And a couple of players may have seen him. He's no, so blind. Find him now, and it's all about who throws that last flash. Back and forth, though. Nico's got the quick trade. Amanek trying to help out, but it's Nico getting all the kills, and Zipex with the wild MP9 can't find anything for it. So Nico, three kills, and Dupree gets an answer on the opposite side of the map. Now that kind of stuns G2 for a moment. They're not quite sure if this fight's over yet. So many CTs throwing themselves at it that they just kind of halt. They pause, and in that meantime, we do have Dupree pushing through B, using the tunnels to wrap around T-spawn, but of course, G2 also playing proactive by throwing Nico through mid-doors. So there are pinches upon pinches, flanks on flanks, and a minute on the clock. Okay, so even though G2 are all facing forward, because of their positions, it's hard for Dupree to complete the flank entirely. Are we within the doors? Kenny's not watching. Oh, okay. Maybe he'll find the timing here. Kenny's holding cross. Dupree could absolutely find this if he hits it right now. Yeah, this is the pro. It's just like, how scared are you to actually oh. complete it? Oh, Dupree could actually come forward off that. He's going to hear him now. Too late. Yeah, I think he wow, thought what it was a moment. maybe a mid B there yeah. for, for a quick second. I mean, Dupree understandably thinking that with three players, somebody could very well be watching for that flank. He decides not to hold W. Nico goes for it first. And with that frag onto the side of device, well... G2 reap the reward. So three survivors here as they take a fifth round on this T side. But again, the back and forth nature, you'd think it keeps things close, but Astralis, the economy's bottomed out. Every single round, the newest pickup, Nico, every round has his name on it in terms of impact so far. We've had stopped a glaive at top mid twice, got a 2K at top mid. We've got a 4K on this round. Um, basically every single round that he's blessed with a kill, they've won. Mm -hmm. When they when he's died early, things have gone into jeopardy. So, a bit scary for Astralis that we get that version of Nico, who definitely knows how to play very well versus Astralis. And um, yeah, other than that, I'm not surprised to see anything else. Nico also the highest rated player in their game versus Furia with a 1.31 rating. Mm. Kenny S just behind him at 1.19. Mm -hmm. So Nico has just kind of had his name across G2's success so far this event. Yeah. You know, a kickoff to 2021. We saw that. Uh, we saw that. Excuse me. Interview earlier. Everything good? <clears throat> no. We all good? Okay. <laughs> I personally really want to know what was said in this interview earlier. We'll find out shortly. After this brief message. <laughs> coming. Okay. Let me hit the button for you. Sorry, you good? Guys. Yeah. Good. Need some water, man. I got some water for I'm you. I'm good, man. I choked on some. I already tasted it. But no, we're cool. We're okay. cool. So, interview with Zonic before the, <laughs> before the game goes live. Mentioning how, like, you know, he's, he's got a bit of a red flag on this match because there has now been time for G2 to properly work with Nico. They had that time off uh, over the break to maybe come at come at this with more of a structure with with a clear picture as to you know the the road to success for g2 and and i mean nico's delivering exactly what i think zonic kind of had his eyes on uh the impacts there so far sorry about that everybody oh you're good oh i guess you're not apologizing to me but on behalf of chad i'm sure they're fine with it maybe i shouldn't be too presumptuous it looks like long is for free. Okay, DJ is not very, apparently DJ is not very happy with you. No, I didn't apologize to him. Yeah, maybe you should have come to land, DJ. <laughs> Sedge. Can the CTs win this round is a question. Well, we do have an AUG in play on Dupree. 
five sets of head armor as well. Everybody's invested fully. So they'll probably rotate fast, right? They're sticking together at the moment. Zipix again in his position on Cat. Clave maybe about to show himself. They do seem a little bit worried about running into like a fake, so they're not completely committing to the site. Let's see how... So this smoke can cancel out the smoke that gets thrown for the long cross, right? Because now no one's comfortable with it. So in terms of the, this game of trying to del delay longer, of course, oh, the CTs will never be able to keep up, but they perform, they pull off this tactic, a boost off the smoke, and, they and are getting even more damage in. Dupree tries to extend through that smoke, looks to pepper them back even more so, but there's a lot of presence here for G2. Great flash! Dupree comes right back! And with Amanek and Nico answering, this is kind of forcing G2 forward, but all of Astralis are still right in position. Good headshot. Nico cracking it down into the CT spawn. Glaive gets his hands on that scout, and Magus gets blasted, because Nico keeps going. The Deagle missing as Glaive gets challenged from both sides. He almost gets there. Had he not missed a couple of those shots he very well could have taken nico but nico with four kills and the 13 five start 10 rounds deep each as important as the last maintaining sight control killing the last and the first guy refragging in every single spot another round where nico's impact is the absolute most important piece of the puzzle an amazing spray down from dupree with a you know a good flash tactic and again this was astralis not working with much this keeps astralis out of a buy from this round um, potentially flipping the economy because G2 would have been broke as well and now puts them in a position where they're on a full on eco. So this is the first spray down with just USPs and already in this half, you know, Nico's made an enormous mark. He's going to be a big reason why they win this map um, if they do. A really hard to see a world, honestly, from how much impact he's had in these rounds, it, it, it makes me wonder if there was a chance that G2 could have any rounds at this point without him. Kind of a weird thought experiment. Well, this round shouldn't need too much from him. Catwalk already completely open for the taking. Sipix Deagle, the only real thing we have to keep our eyes on here for Astralis, starts to come up from CT spawn, so maybe he rocks them back. Maybe he scatters them into Catwalks instead, but Hunter, he finds that headshot mid sight. And the Molotov forces Zipix to disengage. This is a bomb plant, and inevitably, a seventh round win for G2. Even when it's not Nico, it looks like it's him. This could net them something. Magic just crossed bottom middle. Again, we're just looking at, like, singular kills, maybe. And it comes close versus Hunter, but Nexus here to try and stop it, which he will. Okay. Five alive so far. Good seventh round win for G2. Astralis now trailing by three. I'm really curious about what happens next time. Because I think, so if I'm Astralis, I'm probably, I think first of all, I'm thinking about like any kind of default or anything that's like slowness that happens in the round. I'm pro probably going to think about trying to take over upper tunnels based on what we've seen. We haven't seen too many. I think the calling has been really good from, from G2. I, I won't lie. Even though, even though some of the times they're not getting the trades and like they need Nico to bail them out. I think they're picking some of the right spots. They're getting in some of the early aggressions. The defaults are the things that are catching all the pushes from Astralis. And with Astralis too afraid to do anything aggressive, like they are going to be low on information and they're going to be unconfident about their odds of winning. They're going to constantly be rotating and guessing, which is not what Glaive wants to do. A lot of the CT sides now with Glaive involve just trying to get information on and, and sacrificing a piece to like try to take down one. Um, and they're not even getting that one because of how good Nico's been. But I think Upper Tunnels has been untampered with a little bit. We saw Dupree push it once. I think this is a part of the map that's opened up to Astralis. And for G2, they can start to turn their game plan into something more mid-B focused, maybe heavier towards Tunnels, and try to see where Astralis go next. But at the moment, they can kind of do anything they want still. They have the majority of the rounds, and they've really opened up both parts of the map. Look at that quick little, quick little peek from Zipix. Super quick. I'm in recovery mode. <laughs> So are Astralis. This is the gun round they need. He hears so many players moving down through middle that he just gets that back runner. Magisk was trying to just cower to the corner. Zipix jumps down, crosses to lower. Look at Ooh, this. That's a move. Corralled three guys in the corner of doors. And Device, well, he takes himself one. Hunter still lurking inside the smoke between them. He gets both those headshots on CT spawn, and G2 looking to walk away with the round, but Dupree still has one hand on it. Nice go, Tunnels. 
Bomb gets planted in the B site. 1v2 situation, and they can sit and wait and try to catch Dupree. Dupree's gonna go the long way around. Around the world. He could pick up this mid kill if he looks. Oh, he was exposed, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah Nexus, he, he was. He just Nexus missed just him. crouched there. <laughs> That's a weird looking it rock. Didn't, didn't even consider that he could have made this rotation. Okay, but then they're gonna be on a oh my god. Hold on. Oh, if he wasn't making oh in. my god! Oh what? okay, Jesus. There okay, nobody knew what was going on right there. If Dupree had not so Dupree gave him too much credit. He was like, for sure they know I'm gonna flank this way. They really didn't know. They had no idea. Nico's probably trusting the information from lower tunnels. Nexa has no freaking clue that they could Dupree could have gone back through long, through spawn, could be in tunnels. That could have been a disaster, for sure. Okay, but another round that doesn't work out for Mistral. Positionally, that one was a little bit complicated. I really liked when Zipix jumped off Cat into tunnels because he supplanted uh, for the other CT that was missing on B. There was only one guy there, and mid to B was in danger. So he became a fast rotation as a Cat player. That was cool, but it didn't work out. Hunter in that, you know, really cool sequence got those two kills on the players pushing by the smoke. Just slips into the spawn as they walk past him. Chance to kill Hunter while he's alone here. We start to see G2 come back from long, but Hunter's just waiting. And Device hasn't yet peeked his head over the catwalk. Dupree makes a little bit of sound, and it draws the MAC-10 into the scout scope. Doesn't net them a kill, but Dupree will find his trade. However, that B site open, you can see the rotate from G2. By killing Magisk on the scout, they go right to what they want, and they will find that B site open. That'll be a freebie. G2 on fire, toying with their food. Uh, they are outgunning Astralis. Slightly better on some of these setups. Good opening plays. Defaults are strong. Uh, Nico's on form, of course. And now they're even letting them deathmatch a little bit more. So kind, so kind. Get this little scramble tactic from Device. Thinking maybe he can throw a spanner in the works before they put that bomb down. Nexa adjusts the plant and device. Ooh, I thought he was going to get flashed that smoke, but he decides not to commit to it. Again, exit kill still on the table. A chance to keep some of these tools, perhaps. Kenny S going to walk into it and he gets tagged, so that forces him back into the So fast, site. I felt like my brain glitched, <laughs> even though he missed. So right now, there's no clear exit route from G2. They're, they're going to have to take a risk by losing maybe one player if they go towards mid or tunnels. But of course, the round win You can save very by much car as well. They're ninth. I think they can save by car. I'm not sure how much health in total, but... Mm. No. There it is. They're going to come back at it. Device is looking for an angle too, but nope. Yeah, I think the they clock were... saves Kenny. I think they were good. They could have just saved by car. <laughs> just tossed it. With the, I think maybe with the bomb plant behind the tall box instead of under window, maybe mm. that, you know, kind of, they were worried. Mm, yeah. Regardless. They're still fine. 14th round. 15 and 6 is Nico. Great first half from this Dust 2 T side. Outstanding. Back into the guns now. We got a great grenade. Excellent grenade from Aminek, in fact. It's a... Uh, Helping Hunter open up shop. Glaive quick trade. Zipix has allowed Nico to walk through, though. This is going to be an easy pickup versus Glaive. And suddenly there's the potential for pressure on both sides of this B site. Magisk in for a world of hurt, you'd think, but he gets one with him. As Amanek extends out from tunnels, they're going to smoke off that door twice and get their bomb down. I think Glaive's going to blame himself for this one a little bit. Let's see if there's a chance they can pull off the retake. It seems kind of unlikely. TCT's going to peel back now. Thinking about the money and the op on device plus 2v3 retake, but fast round. As soon as we see the we see the tunnel default this time, and it's the round that Astralis picked to go upper tunnels push. But it feels like Glaive's a bit slow to the adaptations this time, where there was a couple of rounds where, I mean, most of the half after the first couple of rounds where no one had gone into tunnels on the T side besides just Almanac. That would have been a good time to double push up or B. You know, here's the point at which G2 are trying to evolve their game plan a little bit, and it's right when uh, Astralis decided to do their two uh, upper tunnels push again. Now, this is just reads, but of course, you can, you can kind of feel it coming, and we see all of this gap, in, um, gap in, in rounds where there's just nothing being done up there, where it was an opportunity for Astralis they didn't take. 
But yeah, so far, everything Astralis have been, try have been trying has either been stopped by just good mechanics from Nico or like a good read from Nexa. So G2 looking sharp here this evening. On fire, officially, for now what is an eight round streak and the auto sniper, the G3 SG1s. Singular. Uh, Amanek, okay. Gonna throw it away as the op of Kenny S finds another. Well, this round, a bit flat. Well, we got Zonic as a coach, so they Jeezy. wanna give this round up. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure enough. Get that coveted 4-11 uh, comeback score line coming. Auto snipers. How dare they? That was pretty annoying, huh? They hit him up through the, the right side door and then through the cross, right? Yep. Oof. Look at all those bullet holes peppering the wooden doors. Doesn't make the job easier, but that's the reward you get for being on an eight-round win streak. Yeah. Turn it into a ninth and call this first half under wraps. Let's see if Astralis, seeing as they have to force the issue in this 3v5, can rob one away. See if we get some kind of individual heroics. Nico facing in middle, catching Glaive. Yet again, he dies towards mid. Meant to be traded by Dupree, whose grenade should be on the money. But he doesn't quite fill up the bank. Nico, 17 health left over after that. Here we get this hard commitment into the B site. And because Dupree's got an easy line of sight, Amanek gets cut off from the front of this. And that incendiary could force them forward. Dupree checking back behind him. And sure enough, they use that chance to attack the bomb site. Now, he may not know two have already crossed. The smoke tells him they're up here. And he will find another with him. But unless it's the Clutch Minister with the 1v3 to close, it's a G2 11-4. It's so desperate, like, even Zipix doesn't know what site, it's, <laughs> what site it is as Dupree flashes himself through the smoke. Well, at least we it. get to see them, at least we get to see him try it. Smoke down inside of the door, he's got a flash to work with. Wary about a flank, but obviously not the case as we have G2 doubled up on tunnels. Kenny S boosted, hits his shot, weakens Zipix for Nico to find his final frag of the half. He ends this one 19 and 7. And after this break, we'll be back with Astralis on the T side. It's me, Zipix. Let me kill you. Let me kill you. It's you, it's me, Zipix. Oh, it's Zahu. Okay. I did it! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, wait, I got you. <laughs> okay, just feed me, it's good. Just feed me. <laughs> Look at this guy. Security for you, Nico. I got you, man. <laughs> Feed me, 
guys, feed me. Feed me. It's me, it's me. Come to me, come to me. Come to me. And so Astralis have their work set out for them. How do they shut down Nico, who's got 19 kills in the first 15 rounds? What exactly is the solution to this T-side? In a best of three that's supposed to be a close 2-0, Launders. Yeah, I mean, it's the simple, like, it's a simple factor with Nico too. Like, he can actually just be above strategy and, like, control the game and take over rounds, like, when you have all by himself. And right now, the system looks very good for G2 as well, which is awesome. So everything is, is firing off at the moment for G2, and that's just a tough problem for anybody, not just Astralis. Um, I'd definitely like to hear what they'd have to say about it once this game is said and done, but it certainly isn't over. Just as good on T-side as they are on CT. Now, over 50% win rate, if not 55 on both for Astralis and Dust2. Flash into middle, Nexa not blind, and that is a crime. Two kills as they try and push through, but look, he's robbed them of their bomb. Nexa is now going to eat that next flash, and his teammates are all falling around him. It's looking like an Astralis recovery for a moment. Kenny S saving the day a bit with that next follow-up kill. But Zipex, he's going to go ahead and wrap CT spawn. And look at the CTs. They push forward. Device, all three. Last bullet, headshot, 4K in the pistol. It's the simple factor. But Nico's not the only one who can deliver Device coming in big in round 16. Yeah, he is Mr. Consistent, Mr. Calm, and Mr. Cool. That was a uh, sick 4K by him. And um, yeah, I actually thought this was Zipex in lower tunnels before he started shooting. I'm just going to say he's going to lock him up. Last bullet. As the mag drops out of the gun. Beautiful stuff from Device. Nice 2v3. And a, and a cool tactic with the flash to the door late to try to catch the CTs pushing up close in the middle of all that madness. Not just trying. Oh, Jesus. Nexa. Smashes him while he's airborne. Hunter going to get hard cleared by Dupree as that temporary wall of smoke gives him the cover for the peak. Amanek caught trying to get cheeky in the tunnels. Of course, that anchor from Astralis now still back in T-spawn. Glaive gets softened to 56, and Device hits the scout headshot. Trade frags. Dupree going to be coming in with the multi-kill here in round 17. Amanek, because he got caught trying to lurk, doesn't even have enough health to really even try this. Yeah, they're definitely fighting very hard. I'm going to go check actually where, which half it was Nico that had the... Um, Got the majority of his kills. I feel like it was actually T side, so to be consistent with the last time he played against um, Astralis and set that kind of kill record uh, versus him. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and make sure that was actually the case. Either way, it doesn't look like he's going to slow down much. I expect good things once he's back on the guns. In the last time they played, um, Nico also top fragged with 10 kills. <laughs> In a 62 match. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was dust too. I just got smoked the last time. It's like, wait, something doesn't. Oh, right. <laughs> Clearly, it was an anomaly, though. 16 2'd. The very end of the year. That was Nexus plucking of Magisk. Oof. Face plants. Hit the ground so hard, it went through the concrete. Astralis going to have one SMG on the play here in the 18th, while G2 are still in recovery mode. I say recovery, but Nico's got a deagle. So maybe he's got a little magic in him. Five round lead still for G2, of course. But a chance at an early offensive run. We'll see what the Danes have in store for us. Right now, they're sending Device again, the solo SMG as the front runner to the A site, the Maverick flying low, scouting out the area. He sees nothing for the time being. And as that one counter terrorist doubles back from Cat, he's caught. Kenny almost killed. Three health as he has to eject back through the Molotov. And just that damage alone is enough to create space for the bomb plant. Okay, so I finally found it. It was 23 and seven on the CT side and a 15 and nine half on uh, T side for Nico. So. Yeah. I guess we're seeing even more potential for um, an even more outstanding scoreline or just half here. 
And I mean, again, it wasn't like a fluff 20 kill half, right? It was pure impact. I can put a four, I can put each 4K to around that one G2 around and maybe even earn them an eco after that. Here's a chance to farm for a device with the Mac 10. Oi. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe he'll, yeah, maybe he won't. He'll be forced to run away. Looking to keep that Kevlar at least. Okay, call it. Who's going to win the match? Who's going to win the map? Who's going to wing the map? I'm going to give it to G2. Okay. Let's do it. Nico's having a hell of a game. Okay. I want a three-map series with this one. I'm joining Pimp. I think that makes you a brave man. Well, somebody has to join him. We're going to have to get your slow-mo prediction next to his on the desk. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Listen, we said map. We said map. Yeah, just the map. Just the map. Yeah, this one's definitely... I don't think either team knows. They might lie and tell you they knew the whole time, but they're lying. Okay, no one gets killed in the cross. No one gets spotted as well. It's a three long setup here for the CT side, but the T's are trying to join them. Nexa immediately into the depths of the pit. Has Nico kind of between the smokes here, keeping one eye through it, trying to find something as Dupree gets boosted behind the blue box. That frag grenade softens up Zippix and Dupree, who oh. has to just dive back down. He's got a crouch, but it's the cross. Oh, goes through. Nico, he gets the better of Device who seemed scoped up on the angle, but wasn't maybe ready. Oh, in a second! Zippix was so low, he gets dropped through smoke on his attempt at a retreat. But Glaive, of course, calling for his teammates to come over because he has this spacing in mid. Kenny S, solely focused over onto tunnels. And for now, that works, but he misses what could have been a critical shot. They get all the closer, and their flash is on the money. Kenny trying to hope that his teammates can rotate, but that's going to be kept honest by Glaive. And Kenny S, good shot into Magisk. They lose that mid anchor. Dupree, having lost the bomb carrier, has to pick it back up, and that slows everything down to a crawl. <laughs> on his final trip back, uh, he ends up dying. That's it. Wow, uh, even though Kenny misses his first shot, he gets an, like a critical second one. And the first one looks easy, but look at this. I mean, the, the spray accuracy was fantastic here from Nico. Device getting outgunned by rifles more than one time in this game so far, and it's in critical moments as well. He even spots for that blue bin's boost, and they punish with grenades as well to make the spray down on the way back from the blue bin even easier. Zipix dying in what looks like an unlucky fashion, but he gets spotted and he got tagged earlier by the HE of Nexa. So Astralis will call attack timeout. And this is where Dust2 gets a bit difficult because if you're not feeling on form, then this map is going to be very punishing. And at the moment, it's not like you can, uh, they can kind of tactically separate themselves that much from G2. These guys know each other a little bit too well here on Dust2. So it's a big confidence pick. You really have to be feeling it on that day. And at this moment, it feels like there's nothing stopping G2 from snowballing. I don't really see necessarily a way out of this um, at the moment for Astralis. Not that they, it's not like they can't win or they won't win another round in this, in this half, but uh, G2 CT size is like a super solid so far. It looks like uh, G2 are just going to establish with long control again. It's a 3 2 setup, so mid is a tiny bit weaker for a second, Kaz is a little bit weaker for a second, but since um, Astralis are not punishing that right away, We'll get the kind of the reset. We see Hunter falling back into mid B as well. And now we've got CTs who are just slightly advantaged in this round with a little bit of long control and they're more fortified across the map as well. Not a huge deal. It does look like Astralis find Cat. Nico will be on the receiving end of this commitment. He has an incendiary in the M4 on ramp. He's got a grenade in his hand at the moment, so ready to throw it. But they are so grouped up right now. Maybe he finds the timing. Oh, but not even. He doesn't even see them. Dupree gets that quick kill, and because of the timing there, there's no way G2's protocols are in place, but that grenade actually does substantial damage, and the quick headshot from Hunter kind of gives them a moment to think about it. Smoke in front of the Xbox, Zippix with the headshot, and a Molly soars forward to help him. He's got this one cool off. They've got long control. I mean, it's... G2 have to save. Yeah, it's not comfortable, but Nexus sitting here in the pit. Um, they're just going to let this one go. They can't are we punish for exits, maybe. They're not watching CT spawn. Let's see how Astralis approach it. But um, there's definitely an opportunity to get the kills now. Remember, everybody on Astralis is down to $0. So they're looking for a way out and to go towards long. 
Nexa getting closer. Nice first headshot. Dodges the off and gets himself a second. That's a nice upgrade. That's majority death, so... All things considered... Someone from Astralis is not going to have everything they want. And uh, I don't think Nico will be playing this angle anytime soon. Man, we need a zoomy on that one. Um, I didn't even see him. Yeah, there's just... That's, it's like, who... When has this ever happened? Basically. He was, it's so clear for Dupree and for Nico. It's like, can't see anything at all. I like the crawl out from Astralis. Here we have it, though. Three players on long again. We're going to get another one of these fights. Remember, we had one early where the T's got stranded behind Blue Box and Nexa. He's got the double kill. Bomb thrown down to the dirt. Flash high from Glaive looking to eject back. Frag and Molotov on his feet. Nexa on with a third kill and still in possession of the bomb. That's critical. Aminex soon to regain vision towards mid. Maybe Magis can slip up Catwalk with a kill. But, I mean, step one is somehow find this bomb back in your possession. Zippix, he's just got to make sure they don't take over control of the double doors. So it's very much on either Magisk or nothing. But that Molly actually hits the feet of both the CTs. Magisk trying to get the better of the timing. He could get Kenny. Kenny, whoa, not careful at all. Running up with his pistol in hand. Maybe assuming that because Aminek got away that, that it was clear for the taking. But this makes it slightly more doable. There's no CT actually inside of Pit. That would have given them that long-range engagement. Maybe they decide to go fight Magisk, but Hunter, he kills Zippix on the other end, and now suddenly this looks impossible. 30 seconds, and Magisk gonna still try it. The flashbang is perfect. G2, they started to get caged, but like a rabid animal, they bite back, and now lead by five. Glad we got to see every second of this. It was such a beautiful round from Nexa on this hold. He even throws a perfect HE and Molotov along with spraying down Glaive to really just make sure that they win this round no matter what. And uh, yeah, it's not been um, recently very good for Nexa. He's been in the red in a lot of his matches. And I think I just kind of off memory was like, man, he's, you know, he he really can take over a game. But recently he's he's been more, more red than black, I guess, if you could uh, call it that for the ratings. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like the, the break has been kind to him. It's a very strong performance so far in this map versus, you know, one of their biggest, if not biggest rivals. And it looks like uh, he intends to help them snowball into what could be a single digit loss for Astral. So it's actually something that I also- Yeah, go see when that loss happened. Look into for their Dust2 matches. Crazy to think as well. This would be a 14-7 map or Scoreline, if it had not been for that Dupree easy headshot on Nico, caught with a grenade in hand, standing on the ramp. That's the one T round that's kind of made this a back and forth since the 17th. Solo AK and Scout, of course, for Astralis. So the economic woes, evident. They haven't had a single digit loss on this map since DreamHack opened fall back in October. What is Astralis? Well, tonight could be the night. Two rounds away from stopping that at least. Of course, whenever you see someone at Goose, that means the G2 or whatever the team is, just for pretty confident it's going to be some kind of A play. They're sacrificing their mid piece here. Mm -hmm. Flash for Nico. Ooh, that hit the money. I saw a few arms up from Astralis. Hunter, he gets his headshot towards mid. Nico's had enough. He decides to go for the peak, and a single kill is all you'll get. Kenny S. Looking for heads. Smoke grenade will deny that vision. Bomb carrier, though, still all the way back on elbow. He had to go retrieve it. They did have time. Bomb has been planted. Couple players for G2 down in the CT spawn. Glaive going to keep eyes back behind him. And Zippix has the responsibility of locking down long. Utility for the retake, a single incendiary. And remember, two of their players already tagged, Kenny S included. Hunter, though, he's gonna find a quick opening kill. Dupree looking with the deek, finds nothing. So it's all on Zippix. 1v4, and he only gets a single frag. A 14th round for G2, two away from the win. And an Astralis style retake as well, all through CT spawn and long. Great coordination, looking very, very sharp, sharing the kills as well. And man, it could not look any better.
They don't look like they're going to slow down. Here's the mid lurk punished, which is a big kill to get every once in a while. You don't want to overcommit to try to find this all the time, but they're picking all the right rounds, really. It's just everything is going so well. No, their IGL is playing well and calling well. Their star player, who they just spent tons of money on, is doing awesome. Tons everybody else hitting sharp headshots. Tons of money. Tons of money. Tons of money. Worth every penny. I saw this this really funny, you know, content piece from Blast. They asked a bunch of the pro players, what would you do with a million dollars? Buy Nico. Oh, did they say that? Well, Art said buy Ziwoo. <laughs> and then he's like, wait, maybe I'd have to sell myself first. <laughs> You've hit that point, boys. Be careful who you big up. Okay. AK spray. Hits the mark, but also takes damage back the other direction. Aminex here to lend the helping hand. Two kills to his name as the Deagles fizzle out for Astralis. All they had to work with here in the 23rd round. This is looking like a potential five alive situation. G2 would lead by seven on their map pick of Dust2. Yeah, we've seen you know, games like this where it's like, oh, it's unlucky. This is not, I don't think there's any luck involved no. here, really. Maybe there's luck that went both ways. But not overwhelming luck for G2 in any sense. They've just been better today. I mean, we haven't even had a 1vx clutch yet for all of the rounds G2's won. There's always been a minimum of two players alive. Mm. So, ooh, yeah. It is fun to watch G2 be this good. Right? I mean, when, when we saw this, this version of G2, when it first was unveiled, like, it had immediate success. And we thought to ourselves, like, if this is what they're going to pull off now, my God, there is no limit. But uh, then it kind of took a bit of a tapering off, and now 2021, so far, so good. 15 rounds for G2, as said, seven map points. And really no sign of stopping. So that retake through uh, CT spawn from the last round. And this is kind of what yeah, Astralis love to do so, so much. Just avoiding the cat retake, coming through mid, getting killed by the lower guy, getting killed on cat. Instead, they just come through spawn, come through long, and take these fights, which they seem harder, but in some sense, you like risk less on the, on the rotation. So, okay, seven rounds to go. Astralis, you got to dig deep. Nothing else to do tonight. Might as well try to fight to win this series early if you even are able to win it. Now, even though I was thinking close 2-0 for Astralis, G2, you know, have odds on both maps as well. Okay, NOA boost here from Hunter, waiting for the jump up, and it doesn't seem like they're totally aware of this at the moment. Oh, actually perfect flash. Nice. No, Glade mows down both. I eat my words completely. Nicely done between him and Zipix. Yeah, that flashbang certainly helped out. Magisk, he's just going to commit to the corner, and this should get him a third kill. For Astralis. Amanek wary of it. Peeks in, but the immediate headshot. So it's only Kenny S's op with a single kill this time for G2. Seems like Astralis aren't going down without a fight. But of course, uh, a little head boost in mid that we haven't seen yet from G2 CT side. And that one flashbang, I mean, they were just standing in the open. Yeah, that was really nice. I mean, that's a little bit of G2, right? Like in the first half, we saw every opening tactic work out so well for G2 on the T side default. Um, unanswered spray downs, holds, yeah, just denying any potential for refrags. And Kenny S knows that he is a high value target at the moment, being hunted down. See if we can get a little bit of a frag movie in the save. Would have been a nice flick. He's feeling pressured from both sides now. Yeah, they're coming for him. Flash goes off. <laughs> oh, he's hiding. You can run, but you can't hide, Kenny. That's a ninth round for Astralis off of the back of that opening double kill towards Doors. Three alive is bodes well for the economy, but look, arms up, chances down. 5v3 straight out the gate. Minute 50 on the clock at that point. Yeah. All right, let's see if the Astralis have any more opening tactics that might be able to just get that quick, like 5v4 or 5v3 if they're that lucky. But, you know, even with the 5v4, the, like, I'll just shoot way up, so that could be good enough. Just goes to show you how good G2 have been. Quick, Kenny S, man. Sharp as ever. Matt just goes down. The one time he gets to use the op, he doesn't even get to see his opponent before he dies. They waste no time. Astralis coming from tunnels into the catwalk play. G2 shuffling feet back to have two guys on site. We saw Nico... Manage a kill from Goose previously, just lets them extend into the elbow. And then snaps it back behind him. Dupree going to charge in, clears it successfully. Mm. 
Nice headshot gives Device the chance to plant, and Kenny <laughs> tries to get the shot through boxes. Hunter one and done. A Is he three take v three. Duel? Oh, does he want to pop back up? Oh, risky. Device playing around with it. This is a big op fight. I feel like it's going to get him killed. Oh, yeah. never mind. Gets Kenny the turn from it. And now it's a 2v3, turn 3v1. Nexa called to arms, looking for the spray down. And Device makes it a multi. Very nicely done. I thought he was really risking it, um, kind of risking the whole round there if that, if that kill comes down. Taking the duel versus long, always scary. But they had the flash tactic as well. Always count on the straws to maximize their duels with utility. Really good stuff here. And the op fade, is that new for him? Op fade for device? I don't even think that's his. It might not be his. Or maybe it's Magisk that he bought, that he yep. dropped afterwards. New op skin, though, added with the Broken Fang operation. Oh, all right. Attack timeout called for G2, I guess. No, just because. Five rounds of difference, ten rounds here. It's his. We're getting a little bit of the Astralis Magisk. What's that? It is his. Oh, it is? Oh, cool. Uh, we're getting a little bit of the Astralis Magic, of course. That do pre-kill. That clean, like, kind of roller blades out, out towards Goose. Headshot instantly. Swings things back. Device winning his duel versus Kenny S. I don't think they have anything to be too shaken up about, but uh, they, they do have to save on this round. So, sure enough, double digits, right? We, we dodged that, uh, that danger zone of single-digit round wins. Tonight's not the night. Yeah, the vice has been um, uh, getting out dueled most of the time. So I think he started to get the confidence back. That first half was definitely, he was pretty despondent. Riflers were getting the better of him. It was a bit too slow for Kenny S. Very rare you ever see a um, situation where he's, you know, we're 25 rounds in and he's 45 ADR. Glade pops up. There's a clean pickup towards the catwalk. And he's looking for more of these counter pistol kills blasts Kenny away and the bomb's going to swiftly cut its way through long onto the bomb site these guys on roller skates pirouetting into an 11th round win and a bunch of free ones here for Glaive he spots all three but he'll immediately fall back he's gonna give up an AK he can really he can see the victory he wants to believe in the comeback He's going to make sure they oh, give up no oh, advantage. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Coming. There it is. Uh, quick little stab in the back. That's money in the bank for Nico. And an AK if he can manage to survive the round. Of course, that ominous threat of running back to the bomb site. We've already seen one ninja defuse today. Not going to happen this time. I would like to officially put it out there that while we were sat in the green room and we were watching that defuse kind of unfold, Maniac called it Simple's Ninja like 20 seconds in advance. Maniac, big brain, More confirmed. like Brainiac. Yeah, dead on. But it's not always about the brains. Sometimes it's about the bronze. And Nico shows us that as he spinal slices poor Dupree. Aye. Look at him just crumple over onto the ground. It'd be symbolic. If he takes that one AK and then he turns it into like some crazy 4K round, I think they, they should be scared. They give him a really, really strong gun. I don't know if they were... I think they might have been able to buy no matter what anyways here, maybe? No? Yeah. Are they saving? Uh, well, I see five point... Uh, Ops been thrown. Ogs trickling in. I wonder if that AK actually influenced their ability to buy because he gets the 1500 plus the AK and now Kenny can op on this with some money left over yeah. as well. I mean, that $1,500 injection is 100% how Nico affords the op. I thought that this was a... I thought this was a good map for Kenny S. He's 9 and 15. He's hit some really important shots, though. I'm sure of it. I'm not just trying to back my own narrative here. I swear to God, he's hit <laughs> some important shots. Those nine kills? Nine kills. Wow. Worth more than the 25. Not true at all. Nico has almost single-handedly won rounds in the first half, but we're no longer in the first half. We are in the second, where Astralis are bringing it back. They have now taken three rounds in a row for the second time on this T side. I wonder if they're reading this properly. They're kind of anticipating maybe an upper push. They've got this default going in. I don't know if they're gonna walk in if it wasn't smoked or not, but the three CTs are here in the B site. And it is kind of just a standoff. They try to sit and wait patiently. Device in danger of getting late nated, of course. But um, it doesn't seem like the CTs have any, any plans to try to punish these positions. Let's see how far Almanac comes up. 
He's in the tunnel now, ready to be flashed. Yep. And he does find device. That's the op down. Nice play. I wouldn't take that trade if I was Astralis. This is going to be a little bit worrying. They do still have some mid control, and nobody's there to stop them. They haven't extended around from the CT spawn. Kenny S is coming back to get eyes Whoa. on it. And he's leaving the bomb for Ooh. Zipix to come back, so he's, he's going to just... try to get a kill by himself. Yep. Oof. This comes down to awareness. Hunter's right there, but there's also a player on car. Yeah, Nico, he gets him blindsided. G2 now, man advantage. This could be the round. Three kills away from a win on Dust2. They're two. pulling the goalie on B. The bomb is outside <gasps> of the B spawn, and Glaive is on Cat. There's a chance for him to pull out the fake, but they don't know what the rotation is for the CTs. Nico scours out mid and gets punished by Zipix. Glaive, though, jumps down. That could have been costly. Hunter, he's trying to fall back, and Glaive, just looking to stay alive, oh. comes at it again. But we've already got Dupree inside of the bomb site. He heard the Hunter reload. Hunter seems aware, and he almost stops it. Seven seconds left, and the bomb just barely gets in. All they had to do was nothing, and they would have had better odds of winning this round. Instead, they went for that mid-push oh. to try to get back some information, and that bomb left back in spawn opened up the round for Astralis. How has that happened? Should have been over when Magus died inside the B-site. All they had to do was nothing. And it starts to get a bit more scary. The thought of actually bringing this map to OT becomes real for Astralis. They're punishing mistakes. Now winning rounds they weren't supposed to. They're looking confident here. They even lose the opening kill of Device. Instant refrag, but their opera gets dropped down. They don't get to see their plan through. The one that they wanted to use to crack open B. G2 started with the correct setup as well. So surely they get slightly nervous now. And Astralis, of course, their number one quality is the calmness, right? The fact that no matter where it is, it's a major or major event. They always play the same. Cool as ice. Cool as the Danish sea. Flashbang off the double doors. Quick routing here from Dupree. Gotta shove his face up against the smoke. G2 are nowhere to be found, but remember they did invest on this. Sitting on max loss bonus. Astralis, if they win this one, officially on fire. And G2, it seems like they want to contend for this cat control using Kenny S as the front runner on the AWP, welcoming some sort of a peak from mid. If they were to boost a player sooner, then maybe Magus could have been caught, but now he's past that dangerous zone. Here's, a, here's a narrative I want to sell you on right now. Okay, low grenades on everybody, MP9 in hand, Kenny S can save this game. If they lose 13 plus saving into potentially OT situation. Mm -hmm. But Kenny S right now, full strength, full utility, and on the right side. Molly goes to catwalk. We've got three CTs, kind of jostling position inside of elbow. Everybody's standing in the no man's land. Oh, this is a, a critical cat peak could kill them all. But here comes Magisk, tucking into the corner, dodging that flash. Nexa's right there, but he just lost his head. And now suddenly things are compromised. These two cat players have to come deal with Magisk, and Nico's gonna do just that. Kenny could still deliver. They've got three bodies onto the ramp, and they're trying to pop up onto the site itself, but Kenny still has this smoke. It's slowly fading, and Glaive shoots him right through it. A man advantage for Astralis and a bomb plant. This could convince G2 to concede, but Aminex kind of locked in spawn. He gets a chance to exit, and I think G2 walk away. A 13th round win here for Astralis. That just was just annoying enough, and there was a gap in the timing that allowed G2 to go back for cat control, but then the Magus winning the duel. Nico refragging is one thing. But Kenny doesn't have any impact from the cat corner as they're crossing onto the site, and then Nico doesn't get another. At the very least, the silver lining on a very dark cloud is that they get the save because their money would be absolutely destroyed. No chance for Astralis to go for this, and the round wasn't close enough that they were influenced in attempting to retake. So that can be nice, but Astralis are now on fire. And uh, we uh, will see what the options are for Kenny S. Does he have enough for op and armor? Is he 5,200? Yeah, he'll have to make a really tough choice here if he wants to go glass cannon or not. Now, this smoke is no surprise. Device is throwing this smoke. Simple is throwing this smoke. It creates a bit of cover on the cat on the elbow. Four offers when you want to fight in this way. 
It's a bit better than standing on the cap bricks and getting Molotoved out or playing in some relatively standard position, but he couldn't hit the shots while he was there. And then gets spammed through it. Device. Oh, he was locked into the corner, but Zipix arrives in time to deny Hunter. That's one of the rifles down for G2. Came into the round with three of them. And now they're going to have to rely on the double deagles and two rifles. Nexa boosted into the catwalk. Let's see what he can deliver with the deag. I mean, Nexa on catwalk with a deagle. Infamous. And he gets himself the head of Glaive, nine health, and it's Magisk to bounce back with the double. He sees the following pistol player, so Magisk basically cleans the board of G2, Man. and Astralis push this game the distance. Leave it to Magisk, sharper than a Japanese chef knife. Here on Cat, all by himself, playing that position that Hunter would play on the T side. Being so annoying, just a pass, trying to stay alive. If you come into his territory, he wins. When he needs to come for you, usually wins as well. Now Manek looks like he'll die without getting one. Astral is within one of taking this to OT. I thought this was a boring game, Connor. I thought this was a game it just it boring from the perspective of G2 just rolling over the Nico show. Yeah. No chance for Astralis. Let's move on to map two. No, it's not like that at all. No, sir. Things get interesting, and they can still be interesting for G2. There's still a chance to close here with two wops. It's just the confidence that has been stripped and ripped from their hands that we have to call into question, and that has created the baggage that leads up to this final and 30th round in map number one. They're going to be thinking about it, but they can't. They have to try to forget it try to play it one round at a time like Astralis are doing and they find another 5v4. Dupree, he's on the front run for this, loses his life as Nico tries to answer from the CT spawn. He's hoping that fire doesn't spread and he's correct. That's sufficient. He's, uh, he's cancelled the out their mid play. That tactic is gone at least. Tries to follow it up with damage but Astralis had already disengaged that much further. They are sitting here in middle, hoping that maybe he tries to take a chance. Device looking to lock him in. And Nico tucks to the corner. Amanek back on plaque. Gonna be, oh, given the collateral. Magisk down to 17 health after that shot. Device just died to Kenny S. And G2, of course, playing with everyone's heartstrings, pushing it down to the limit. But now it's gonna take a 1v4, and Magisk doesn't have the health. 16-14, G2 take match.